Hi, I'm Russell Leidick, and you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl Channel. I just wanted to take this opportunity to give you a tour of an Asian-style aquarium shop. This is East Ocean Aquatic in Singapore. From a historical perspective, this sort of shop has its roots in Japan and Hong Kong of the 1990s, which is when Takashi Amano's nature aquarium design philosophy began to take root in East and Southeast Asia. Amano-style tanks are spotless, if unnaturally so, and feature impressively engineered equipment, ironically in support of an ecosystem which would stand on its own in the wild. This is in stark contrast to my own eco-aquarium concept, but it has its merits, above all the ability to deliver a stable ecosystem to anyone with patience and money, but not necessarily much ecological expertise. Today, the epicenter for shops such as this one is probably Tung Choi Street in Hong Kong, which is lined with nature aquariums from end to end. But they are scattered throughout the region, although in lower numbers than a decade ago. The decline in their popularity is almost certainly due to the explosion of mobile technology, which has had the unfortunate side effect of distancing us from nature and contemplation. Shops of this sort are less geared toward making product sales and more geared toward creating customer relationships. The emphasis is not on maximum power filtration or the biggest tank one can buy, it's on ecological balance, functional elegance, and artistic expression. These considerations are virtually absent from Western aquarium stores, at least those run by the large pet companies, which cater more to idiots obsessed with plastic decorations and deeply inbred fish exhibiting poor coloration, if not poor overall health. True to form, like most such shops, East Ocean stockpiles its aquariums and stands out front, with most everything else located inside. This reflects the high commercial rents in most major Asian cities. I suppose that the owners have realized it's hard to steal a heavy aquarium, and if anyone did, it would still be worth the savings on floor space rental. The pride they take in their tanks speaks for itself. I don't need to convince you that they care about what they're doing, and they've done their homework. And, as is usually the case, their staff are actually rather knowledgeable about the hobby. The philosophy seems to be that small and educated beats large and cheap when it comes to aquarium store economics. The success of this model appears to be driven by the relatively more affluent nature of their clientele. In cities such as Singapore, where floor space and free time come at such a high premium, one does not enter the hobby casually. Failure would simply be too expensive. And that's another reason, incidentally, I do prefer the eco aquarium model, particularly as applied to fish bowls. Anyway, in the 1980s, I remember walking through Wan Chai in Hong Kong, visiting all the aquarium shops, most of which are long gone today. They would have most of their stock outside, literally racks of aquariums on the sidewalk. I still remember the first time I ever saw a discus. A large school of them was swimming in a spacious but barren glass tank. They looked healthy, yet quite dark, most likely due to the stress they were experiencing by living out there on the sidewalk with no refuge from the crowds or the sun. They were selling at the time for 80 Hong Kong dollars apiece, which was about 10 US dollars. I remember thinking, why would anyone pay such an exorbitant sum for such a dark fish that barely moves? <laughs> Today, of course, I only wish I could find such healthy, full-grown discus for such a pittance. But the Asian aquarium scene has evolved tremendously. Today, Hong Kongers dominate the Aquatic Gardeners Association top-ranking aquarists. And by the looks of it, Singapore might not be far behind, although the hobby is much smaller here. The only primitive and frankly shameful practice which still survives in some places, which you can see for example in recent videos of Tung Choi Street, is that of hanging fish in plastic bags at the entrance to the shop. I would rather catch and eat fish every day than to treat them in this inhumane manner. In Singapore at least, this does not seem to occur. All in all though, I hope we will see some more shops with this level of competency in the West in years to come. It would make an attractive business model in certain cities, particularly those with an emphasis on the value of the natural environment, especially because I see no signs that the larger pet store chains are thinking along these lines, which creates opportunity for small players who know their niche well. And to be sure, there are some very successful small players, although it would be nice to see more of them. For my part, I'm just happy to have them around as a form of insurance that the big city will never become completely detached from the jungle. Consider this as you watch the remainder of the video. Thanks for listening.